All right, cool. So we're very fortunate being in Max Nagel to have so much access to so much great equipment by, by Prime Fitness. And so, of course, one of the great things we have with Prime Fitness is that ability to use vari variable resistance to either match a resistance profile, to program in different parts of the ranges for emphasis. We can also emphasize we want to a bit more length in range here. We can prioritize a little bit more short in range. Obviously, one of the big benefits we get from the Prime Fitness machines is going to be that ability to match resistance profiles to our will, essentially. Now, a couple of things we have to consider with this, though, and, and we'll, we'll kind of contrast this a little bit to the cable row as well. We just have to bear in mind that with the cables and with the D handles, we have the ability for the wrist to rotate and to move more freely. And so that's obviously going to be very beneficial as far as elbow health goes and as far as just that client being able to move a bit more naturally to their structure, which is ideal. With a machine, that we're obviously not going to have that ability. Now, we could argue that we could add D-handles to this machine, but there is also something that is quite beneficial about having that kind of guidance that you get from having a fixed handle and from the restraint that you get from the pad combined with that ability to create friction on the handles and so on and so forth. We can definitely use that to our advantage if we so please. So, for example, Charlie could hold the handle and we could ask him, right, we're going to bias abduction as we go out here. So I want you to think about pushing your hands out towards the edge of the handle without them moving, just sliding along. And that little bit of extra friction is going to help us create a resultant force, which is more favorable for the tissues that we're trying to target, for example. Uh, so that's one of the benefits we do have with the fixed handles. The disadvantage is if someone's got really creaky wrists or elbows, it might not be a particularly good choice. Now, another thing we discussed before this video, which is kind of important as well, is we actually have a bunch of different, and we'll, we'll get just a little a little video shot of this um, that you can see. But if you look at the variable resistance of this cam here, you can see that there's five numbers, one, two, three, four, five. We actually had Charlie on number four, where it actually should technically kind of drop off a bit towards the kind of, um, not just the end range, but just kind of that, almost like a last third of the middle part of the range. Problem is with Charlie, because his levers are so long, he's a you know, tall guy, but guy, he actually didn't really get much of a drop off. Whereas for me using that, I'd probably get a pretty sufficient drop off and have no problem. So you have to bear in mind that when we are using machines, there's a lot more individualization to machine work, take a second Charlie, than we actually think. Sometimes we sometimes just think, put someone in there, get them roughly in the same choreographed textbook cues that have been used for years and years, and we just get people to grip and rip, right? But it's actually way more individualization that we potentially need to get as well. Now. Last point with machines, it's quite good as well. Yes, we have the variable resistance, but some of the same things still apply as the cables here. So if we get Charlie to come in again. Obviously one of the biggest advantages to the machine here is that we have that chest support. So we'll have a maximal ability to keep that bracing and actually being able to use a counter force cue to be able to maximize the direction of tension here. So as Charlie pulls back, my cue might be to get him to lean even more, double down on that lean into the chest pad. That's gonna allow him to minimize leakage of force elsewhere and really drive as much tension back in that direction of force that we really want. And then the second thing we hear really as well is that it's quite easy to spot someone in a machine because it moves in a fairly fixed path. So if he's starting to fatigue, for example, if I wanted to apply manual resistance, I can do that fairly easily. But similarly, if he starts to fatigue towards the end of a set, if I want to provide manual assistance, I can easily do that with very minimal uh, without getting too hands on. And we've got to remember that any tactile touch, relax for a second, Charlie, any tactile touch we place in the body is uh, more information for the nervous system to deal with. So we have to be very careful with how hands on we are at certain times. And there's definitely a time and a place. But if we have an ability to either apply a cue or apply a, a assistance, at a point of contact that isn't actually the human that we're working with, that can be hugely beneficial because it's just a little less sensory feedback for that client to deal with. So these are just some considerations between targeting the mid-back with rows between uh, the cable and between a machine like this.